I'm Miguel Clifford. I look like a very healthy, healthy person, but I got COVID. Well, it's one morning I got up, I was coughing a lot and I started sweating. So my people decided to tell me, well, you should go to Tapia and get a, a PCR test done. I was a little hard at it. I thought it was just a normal, a little cold because, because I must have slept with the AC or, or something. So then I still decided to go. When I went in, Dr. King, after doing the test, he called me in, put me to sit down. When I said to me, um, I have some sad news that you tested positive for COVID. I was like, wow. I got to Starfish on the Saturday afternoon about 1, 3, 2 o'clock. They examined me, they took my pressure, my pulse, everything. Then they put me in the room, they told me that I cannot get out of the room. Anything I need, I just have to call the reception. They're going to bring it, people are going to attend to me. So I should be fine. I said, okay. I spent Saturday, Sunday. Monday, the cough started getting worse. I had a diarrhea, which was, I couldn't control. If then my cough, I would pass out on me. So I called the nurse. I told her that I'm coughing heavy. So um, can you give me something for the coughing and for the diarrhea and the pain, because and the pain I'm having. And I'm, I'm lying down because I'm the only one in the room. I'm sweating for about five hours straight. Sweating, sweating, wipe myself, take out t-shirt, wring it put it outside, on the, open the door, slide it, get dry, take another one. And then they called me to me, okay, the doctor prescribed something for me, so uh, if I could get somebody to come and buy it for me, I tell them, no problem. I, I called my niece, which lives in Rodney Bay. She went to pick it up, she bought it, she dropped it off. They dropped it off in the room. Some inhalers and some antibiotic and stuff, cough syrup, I started taking it. About two days after that, I started feeling, it was, the coughing was getting worse. So I was on the phone with a friend and she told me, but Miguel told me you're wheezing. I said, what's wheezing? She said, but like you're gasping for, for air. I said, really? She said, yes, but you're talking to me and I could hear. I said, nah, man, I'm fine. She said, no, Miguel, you, you have a problem breathing. She said, later this evening, when the doctors and the nurses pass by, tell them that you have a little problem breathing to hear what they're going to say. Then the nurses pass at seven, a little after seven, they check my temperature. And when they checked me, they realized that my oxygen was low in my blood. Then they tell me, okay, they're going to have the doctor to come and check me out. I do hear from them again. I call them and they tell me, they got an ambulance, it's on its way, so it will be there shortly. So I got myself ready, I pack up my stuff, I take a little shower, and I waited for them. Then, then they called me about 11, 13, going up to 12. They told me, the ambulance is there, can I make it to the lobby? I told them, no, if they have a wheelchair, they tell me they didn't have a wheelchair. I said, well, okay, I'm coming. I asked God for a little shame because I was weak. So I walked out of the, the room, I walked towards the lobby, I met them at the lobby, they put me on the stretcher, they took my vitals again before I left, they put oxygen on me, and then they took me to the hospital. When I got to the hospital, like I got to the hospital in time, at the minute I reached there, nurses and doctors on me, oxygen, and they start putting um, things on my chest, they check my heart, they came and gave me blood feeding, because they tell me that I was having, um, having blood clot, I could have get a heart attack. And they started giving me medication, they put me on drips. And that's when they said I spent two days in the ward nine. And then they took me to a, a lower room because they told me that I could start breathing because the oxygen became lesser. Because the pressure that they gave me when I got there, I realized the pressure got a little lesser. So they told me that I have to, to breathe on my own. So that's why they sent me to a lower room. While I was in the lower room, I had a couple complications with my white blood cells and red blood cells. They wasn't balanced enough. They gave me a lot of antibiotics to, to bring out. And I never had that problem before. I never had heart problem before, I never had blood problem. And then I spent 16 days at the hospital. I, the only people I, I got contacted at home that got the COVID was my wife and my two kids. None of my friends that I was around didn't get it. I, up to the like today, I don't know how I got it. I don't know if it's from money, because I deal with a lot of money. I don't know if it's somewhere I go and somebody touch me. I don't know. I always have my mask, I always have all my vehicles have hand sanitizer, sanitize myself 24-7 and my home everywhere, the whole business everywhere have sanitizer. So I don't know where I picked it up. So it's it's so easy to pick it up and you don't know until a couple of days then you start feeling sick.